Greetings, my name is Charles McCall, and I want to welcome you to Lesson 3 of Leadership 101. In Lesson 3, we're going to be looking at five characteristics of all leaders, and we're going to be unpacking those and explaining them uh, in further lessons uh, in this course, but this is an introduction to those five characteristics. And so five characteristics of all leaders. All successful and effective leaders have the same characteristics. This is important for us to understand, and that's what I'm gonna be teaching you uh, in this course. The same basic uh, uh, characteristics and skills that you can use across the board wherever you're at. And if we know those characteristics, and if we have those skills, we can develop them in our own lives, and we can also develop them in almost any situation. That if we change jobs and you develop leadership skills at a certain level, and if you change uh, jobs, careers, if you change locations, if you want to serve as a volunteer, those, these five characteristics are going to be beneficial for you uh, across the board. I'll give you an example is that I was a, a leader, I was an associate pastor uh, in a growing church in the United States, and I had developed a certain level of skills uh, in doing that. I, I moved to Cambodia with my family in 1995 as a missionary and I worked as an associate for a few years, and then I became the senior leader of, of a church in uh, the capital city of Cambodia, and I became the director of an international organization. I continued to develop those leadership skills and my leadership capacity, these five right here. And then, uh, then I moved, my wife and I, some of our children moved back to the United States, and we were in the United States for five years, and I went to work uh, for the American Red Cross in Northern California. I had no skills no experience at all uh, to be able to work with them. Uh, but as, as I stepped in and I began to learn their policies, I began to, to learn what they do as an organization. I was the director of emergency management for uh, about 18 counties uh, north of San Francisco up to the Oregon border. And as I began to, to learn basically how they did things, but these five leadership uh, skills that I had learned during the course of my leadership growth, I was to apply them in the the very same way working for the American Red Cross and disaster management and that would be true if I moved into uh, other areas and so these five skills they're five skills five characteristics that all leaders have uh, that can be used across the board and so we're going to dive right into this and the first characteristic is a leader sees an opportunity, sees a need, or sees an opportunity. You know there are people every day through that are all around us that we know, friends, family, co-workers, and they see a need. They see a need on TV, uh, they see a need of poverty, they see a need of abuse and justice or, or uh, something that needs to be developed to make society better or to make their neighborhood better. And you know they think somebody should do something. How many times have you said that? How many times have I said that? Somebody should do something. Well. Anybody can see a problem, but a leader sees a need and makes movement toward meeting that need. That's the difference between a leader and a follower. They see a need or an opportunity. It may be an injustice. Uh, it may be a, a, a natural need. It may be a leadership gap. It may be something in your organization that is lacking, your church that is lacking, in the neighborhood that is lacking. It may be spiritually associated. It may be morally associated. Uh, it may be associated with everyday, everyday life. But a leader sees a need and he sees an opportunity and that need and opportunity creates a passion in their heart to do something. That is the key. We have a full lesson on passion coming up. And so uh, we see a need and something happens on the inside of us. I want to do something to try to solve that problem. But you know, often we think I don't have the abilities. Again, when I moved into uh, disaster management uh, in Northern California, I had no experience in that field at all. I'm thinking, how can I ever do this? But I discovered that the leadership characteristics and skills that I had used in other areas of my life, they're transferable. And so, uh, but the passion comes from seeing the need, the opportunity, something on the inside. And then we respond uh, to that need. The person responds to that need. They start moving forward to do something about that need and that action brings others to join in with them. So this is a very clear process and uh, it's very important for us to understand as well is that a leader sees a need or an opportunity, 
Uh, that need or opportunity creates a passion, something on the inside, and then they move out to do something, and then others begin to join them. That's been my experience, and that's how it works. Characteristic number two is leaders have some ability. Now, again, I'll remind you, a lesson is coming up on five levels of leadership, uh, but uh, that leaders have some ability. I believe that everybody has some ability and it's on the inside of them uh, and it's our role as leaders, our senior leaders, to draw that out of them. But every person has some ability to do something. Uh, repair a bicycle or mow a lawn or take care of a, of a garden or flowers uh, or maybe be something more higher or seemingly significant uh, than that, you know, to, to lead a nation to lead an organization, but everybody has some ability. That's got to be a foundational belief that we have as leaders. Every person has some ability on the inside of them to do something. And if we're a Christian, it's important for us to discover our spiritual gifts because the God of heaven, He gives us spiritual gifts on top of these natural uh, abilities uh, for the purposes that He has for us. And so we need to discover our spiritual gifts and we need to discover our natural uh, talents and then, we and then we develop those into learned skills. And so we, everybody has potential and we have to discover what that is, discover what that seed form of spiritual gift is discover what that seed inclination is regarding uh, talents. You know, some people have a natural inclination toward numbers and can figure things out. Others have a natural inclination towards artsy types of stuff. Others have a natural inclination toward uh, children or people related. And so we need to discover, so what is my natural I inclination and where is that leading? What, what big field is that leading me into? We need to discover that. Uh, and then we need to uh, develop some skills, gain some skills that are associated with that field that, we feel that we're being moved into and then we need to develop them until so that's the key. Everybody has something in seed form but we have to develop it. And so we have to find the skill, we have to find the talent that is on the inside of us already, that which is co coming by God or coming by uh, nature or coming from our family and we have to develop that skill or talent. Then we have to find a way to connect that gift, skill or talent with a need. Okay, so this is, we start discovering who we are and, and the deposit that has been made in us. And then we, uh, we try to connect that to where is a need that I might be able to meet using what God has put in me or what I've developed uh, within me over the years. And as I said, that need uh, may be in terms of, you think in terms, I think in terms of children, I think in terms of young adults, I think, think in terms of married people. And so the, the, the skills and who we are as an individual, our shape, our shape. Uh, may be directed toward people or certain, uh, certain demographics of people. It may be directed toward technology. It may be directed toward uh, education. It may be directed toward government or, or business. And so we need to actually, you know, I, I believe that there are, are seven spheres of, of society and I think this is helpful for us uh, to try to determine where we might fit. And uh, one of those spheres of society uh, is religion. So we may fit in the church world somewhere Another one is social relationships. And so that would be working with people and working with families, working with children in the social relationship area. Uh, another one is education. Another sphere of society is education. So we may be working within the, the educational field in some capacity. Or we may be working in uh, the arts and entertainment, and it may be you know, painting, photography, singing, dancing, drawing, uh, all of that field of arts and entertainment. Or it may be working in media and, and technology, radio, television, and different forms of technology. And so if we can use these seven spheres as, as a guideline for us, we discover who am I and what deposit has been made in me? What is the passion? And then we, f we discover what sphere of society might that fit in and then we start to run it down. And so what is the need? How can what I have in seed form help meet a need? And how can I develop what is in seed form within me to develop a need? And so we find a way to connect that skill, gift, or talent with a need and then uh, people will see the results.
people will start noticing results, that we're producing some results in, in that field, in that, that, that sphere uh, that we're serving in or, or working in. Others will be blessed as a result of that, and others will benefit as a result uh, of us stepping into our level of leadership and meeting that need according to our shape, and then others will join us. Others will want to work with us. Others will want to partner with us. Others will want to know more what we're doing. And so there's this continued growth. And so that's a very uh, specific pro process, and I think that's a very helpful process as well. <clears throat> and so uh, we have a passion. I'm talking about having a passion. When we see a need and we have a spiritual gift, skills or talents that meet that need, then often a passion arises in our heart. Something begins to stir, a desire. And that passion drives us to sacrifice. And so for any of us, if we want to, if God is moving us to meet a need, and that would involve starting a business, that would involve serving in an area or creating something new, there's going to be sacrifice this on our part. We're going to sacrifice our time to get it done. We're going to sacrifice our finances to get further education or to invest in that need. And so the passion will create a sacrifice in our life. That passion drives us to continue when we're tired or discouraged. And so you see, passion is very key because every endeavor that we get into, we're going to meet with obstacles. We're going to meet with difficulties. And so prepare yourself from it, for it. But if you have the passion uh, in you, well then that passion is going to give you strength every day. You know, I would tell you that as a, as a missionary in Cambodia for, for many years, I woke up every morning with a passion. Let me just say this, is that in 1994, I made two trips to Cambodia, and I saw a need, and God touched my heart, and, that, and He gave me a passion for the people of Cambodia who were like lost sheep. The gospel uh, did not exist hardly at all in that country yet, and I saw the need there, and so a passion arose that need, somebody needs to meet that need. And I realize that, that I have some, in seed form at least, of, of what is necessary to be able to meet that need. And so that passion caused me to sacrifice. It caused me and my wife and our four children, aged from one year old to seven year old, uh, to leave the beautiful state of Oregon and to move to a war-torn country. There was still a war going on in that country. There was no infrastructure, no electricity uh, in our house and no running water after a few months streets were terrible, dangerous kidnappings, uh, broad daylight assassinations, and, and yet it was the passion uh, that, that caused us to leave the comfort in our family uh, to be able to, to do something else uh, that we felt like that God was calling us to do. And it was not easy. I will tell you it was not easy uh, living in, in that kind of a situation. And so we met with many obstacles and many discouragement, but it was the passion that kept me going. Every day I would get out of bed with a passion something inside of me because I saw a need and I knew that I could pull together the resources in some way somehow to be able to meet that need and so the passion was my strength and drove me every day and so the passion drives us to continue on when we're tired or discouraged and the passion will draw others in again when people start seeing we have some results or we're moving in that direction to meet that need there are others that also would want to meet that need but they're not the leader. They haven't moved forward to try to, to do something about it, and so they will join you and I. And that's exactly what happened to me. I've got many people uh, in Cambodia now as a result of me. Dozens and dozens of people have come for short term and long term, and many have lived there and married into society. And it's because, uh, because I saw a need, it's because I let God's passion touch me, and I felt like I had a little bit of ability to meet that need, and I made the sacrifice, and others followed. That's the process, my friend, and God wants to do the same thing to you. And it may be a children's ministry, it may be a, a business, it may be something big, it may be something small, it may be something in the church, it may be something in another sphere of society, but that's exactly what God wants to do in you and He wants to do through you. And so the fourth characteristic of all leaders is they have skills with people. And leaders must work with and connect with people, customers, staff, 
and fellow leaders. And if they lack skills with people, it will be difficult for them to move forward. And so this is a real important key also. There are many people, they want to be a leader, they see a need, they have a passion, but they lack people skills. They don't know how to relate to other leaders. They don't know how to relate to customers. Uh, they have, uh, and I'll just tell you that, that many of these issues are the result of our personalities. And so in my course, Discovering Your Spiritual Shape, I have a personality profile. You can go online and you can find them. A personality profile, very, very important for you and I to understand the strengths and the weaknesses of our personalities. And we have to develop skills with people. Again, I'll be honest with you, from my own personality, I prefer to be alone. If I have a choice, I will be alone. And so uh, uh, it's important for us to try to develop uh, the skills that we need with people. These are communication skills, verbal and written communication, relationship skills, uh, people problems, uh, solving people problem skills, uh, how to cast vision and draw people into your vision, and how to release people into the appropriate role for them. These are all skills that you can develop, and I'm going to help you in this course begin to develop those skills. And the fifth characteristic of a leader, of all leaders, is they have vision and they have goals. A vision is what you see for the future for your lives and for your work, your, your church, your business, your school, your organization. And so vision is what you see further down the road. Many people don't have vision. And the Bible says if you don't have a vision, you're going to live carelessly. There are many people that are living haphazardly, carelessly, not really going anywhere. You and I can help them. We can get God's vision for us, God's vision and passion for something, and help, we can help bring them into God's vision for them and help them to create vision for themselves. And so a vision is what we see for the future. Goals are a milestone. Uh, for the future. And so goals are what we set and we use those to evaluate our progress. And strategy is how we're going to reach those goals. And so again, these are all, I'm just introducing you to some basic things. We're going to develop these in Leadership 101. We're going to develop all, all of this and you're going to learn how to do it. And so I'm excited uh, about lesson three of introducing you to five characteristics of all leaders that can be used across the board. We're going to develop those uh, during the, the, the future uh, classes in this course. And so I want you to take a few moments now and if you're by yourself, you have some questions for discussion, I want you to read them and I want you to write down what you your answers are. If you're in a group, I want you to break into groups, only two or three in every group, and I want you to answer these questions. Uh, number one, share an example of a need in society. Something that you see, something that is you've seen on TV, you've seen in another country, you've seen in your own neighborhood, uh, you're aware of. And so each one of you share one need that you've observed in society, uh, and what do the people exactly need? Second question, what are some of the natural talents or skills that you have? Okay, so each one of you share, you know, I'm a typist, I'm a secretary, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a policeman, whatever it is, uh, I can do this, that, or the other thing. So share that with one another. And then discuss, you get some feedback from those in the group. How can you use that to meet needs in society. And I'm telling you, if you're a bicycle repair person, if you're a beautician or a barber, uh, or if you're a, an accountant or bookkeeper or something like that, computer technician, these are skills that you've developed and you can use those, God can use those kind of skills to reach other people and to bless other people. And so discuss that in your group. And number three, what people skills do you need to develop? Remember Moses' excuse? He said, I can't talk, I'm not a very good communicator. Okay, so maybe that's you. Or maybe you're, you tend to anger or you're impatient. Uh, so you're shy. And so what are some of the, the people skills uh, that you need to develop? Thank you for listening. We're looking forward to a, a great future lessons and we're going to see great things happen in your life, great things happen in your church, your organization, your business, and your family.